maxing out APM and leveling up. Skill shots, build orders, gotta gear up. With legendary drops, so let's go and do the daily grind. <laughs> hey everyone, and welcome to the daily grind again. Thanks for joining us again on our humble podcast. We have a very exciting episode for you today. Uh, we are uh, right in the heart of of e3 and post e3 coverage everyone's soaking all soaking it all in basking in the glory of new video games up and coming video games miles what is the hype level for you sir well the level of this podcast is level four and the hype level for me for e3 uh, i think it'd be a little cliche to say over nine thousand. so we'll just go with nine hundred it's been a hell of a good show and we're going to get to it we're going to get to our thoughts but we're going to do a couple things that are very important to our podcast as most of your listeners know and only one listener knows of his contribution so far to our podcast which is that delicious techie music that is gracing our ears we are thanking ryan ramon a.k.a. Eshatron, the good man doing the good work. Yeah, it's uh, one of my good friends from home, and uh, he offered to do this. He's kind of a music buff, and he mixes a lot of his own music. And we're actually going to post a link to his page. He's in for some kind of, I believe it's a contest, and he's got to get a certain amount of views, or listens, rather. He Once he breaks that threshold, he's actually entered to win uh, some more exposure so we'll absolutely do that for him and we look forward to any contributions that he has for us in the future yeah absolutely yeah it's great it's a great jam like i don't i don't too often get into that kind of i don't know what the classification is house music or uh yeah. electro yeah I, th- I, I don't know we'll just go with house i don't know yeah, i don't know either. i don't know i was jamming on it i like it a lot yeah we'll continue using that and more of his work whatever he decides to gift us And all he has is our eternal thanks. Yeah, absolutely. So thanks, Ryan. And on to the next important part of our show. Miles, what are you drinking tonight? What is in your glass? What is going down your gub? So this week I actually have a beer, and it's a good one. It's the Stone Enjoy by IPA. Specifically, Enjoy It by July 4th. July 4th, right? And yeah, so uh, you are you do you have that in the new six packs or in the bomber? It's in the bomber. Nice. Okay. I didn't yeah. know they made a six pack. Yeah, yeah. That that started coming out, and that people are excited about it because it's a delicious beer, and they're like, "Oh, I don't know if I can enjoy a whole nine percent beer." Oh, you in can. one sitting, <laughs> and I can tell you that it's a possibility, uh, and uh, not always a good idea. But uh, this evening, I'm enjoying uh, Bauhaus's Wagon Party. I sent this hey. beer to you a while back. Yeah, they're a local Northeast brewery. Uh, West Coast style lager, so aka steam beer, aka kind of the origin of Anchor Steam, and uh, kind of hopped up like a pale ale. So delicious, refreshing, 5.5%. Anyone living in Minnesota should pick it up and try it because it's delicious. Or make friends with someone that lives from Minnesota and have them send you out some. See, I already have too many friends outside of state and I can't ship beer to all of them. That's, well, just stop being people's friends from other places. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Just me. The Miles philosophy. <laughs> right. <laughs> I suckered Miles into playing a game that we talked about last week. Yeah, you did. Suckered, na- nagged, pestered, you know. That's right. All Text those... messages every other day. Pretty much. Uh, so Miles, Miles got into Destiny again. Yeah, it was, uh, you know, I was doing laundry on Sunday and Sean texted me, Hey, so I uh, want to play some Destiny today with a bunch of Ys. And so I was like, you know what? I'm just kind of done with the text from Sean. So I works. resubscribed to PlayStation Plus just for three months. You don't have my full commitment yet. And then uh, I bought the two DLCs, and yeah, we hopped on and got carried a few, uh, what was few it? things. Yeah, well, a couple. I mean, you got carried, right? I, yeah. <laughs> a, a couple. Uh, a couple nights ago on Tuesday, we actually. Uh, ran through both raids in one night. Actually, we did three raids. We did a normal version of Vault of Glass, normal of uh, Crota's End, and hard mode Vault of Glass. And Miles didn't get the greatest loot. <laughs> yeah. I got a few guns that I had been waiting for for months on end, so I'm pretty excited about that. I was pretty excited, too, just because it's nice for people who are carrying and doing other people a favor to get something out of it. I mean, that's yeah. good. And I was half in the bag that evening, and I was actually running the whole thing on my 31 Warlock. 
uh, when my max level that I probably would have run if I had my senses about it. Probably wouldn't have gotten those guns, so I'm pretty excited that just with his track record. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, so I'm pretty excited that I did that. And um, yeah, so what do you think of Destiny so far, Miles? Do you share my sentiment? I mean, obviously you're a little behind in some of the content. So I will say, I um, when you had mentioned the dailies and stuff, and I was like, I just like cringed a little bit. I was like, oh my god, yeah, like, like you need more of those in your life. Yeah, so it's like, ooh, like the weekly like one off, like we all get together and talk and like have fun and stuff and play. Yeah, that's a ton of fun. That is a, I mean, we that was maybe Tuesday was the most fun I've had in Destiny, just rolling with a bunch of people from the gamer den, uh, a couple guys, Rory, Nate, that are. Very good at the PvE content in the game. Yeah, they were pretty yeah. ridiculous with their gear and just generally... I don't know, it was just crazy. They carried yeah, me... Yeah, I had a lot of fun. And, uh, no, it was... Uh, no, it's good. The I think that level of interaction with the game and commitment is where I would like to be, but getting okay. up to that sort of level 34 sweet spot and being sure. like relevant to the content, mm-hmm. that's going to that grind is just so daunting to me. So yeah. I've been putting that off. I think that's something I'll give time to this weekend and, yeah. or weekends in general. I mean, to do those daily sort of quests and some PvP. Yeah, do the dailies. Uh, we, you finish the story at this point, right? So it's just about the dailies. Um, the biggest thing I could say is definitely once you get to the level at which you can, or if you have, you know, you have friends that can run you through some of the weekly content, that's when you'll get your biggest rewards as far as gear um, and currency. Uh, and then doing those dailies uh, just kind of help ease the game for you, like make it a little bit s- smoother to, you know, get higher level gear, get. Um, higher weapons and yeah i'm looking forward to you know seeing what your thoughts are in a couple of weeks you know after spending a bit more time with the game the the, the um i did, i just was kind of pleasantly surprised with the levels and the platforming little aspect that was a lot sure. of fun and, and that's very singular to the raids yeah right, exactly so i i mean i appreciate that the, i still have my quarrels with the game i still feel like the classes are their their abilities are on cooldown too long. You don't quite mm-hmm. you don't get to see the flare of every class, and then within each class, their subclass. So yeah. I I that still bugs me that you have to do so much shooting and not a lot of throwing abilities out and that sort yeah. of thing. Yeah, um, that's what you know. That's what gives the guns their glory, so to speak. You know, like you get items in WoW, and they modify how your spells work, right? So you're getting lower cooldowns on that. You're maxing out your um spell power your rotation and, yeah, right your... and so so that's kind of a big deal um whereas this the weapons that you use the gear that you use directly affects the fight the gunplay you know right like uh some of them especially like the exotic gear will modify sometimes like how your super works which is kind of a big deal um once you get to sort of like the point where you're kind of looking at your character and you're min maxing and kind of figuring out what is the best loadout for either pve or pvp that stuff gets really fun and you start gaining a better understanding of your character and how it works outside of casting a grenade or a melee or a super Mm -hmm. you know so, and uh, we'll talk about Destiny in the E3 portion of the podcast because there was just a bunch of stuff that seemed like it might really appeal to you. So we'll get into that. Uh, have you touched Splatoon again in the last oh, week? Yeah, I've I've been playing. Oh wow, that. I didn't That's know that. Surprising amount, actually. I got into it probably Saturday morning. Woke up. I was like, I don't feel like playing Heroes Alone. Chris wasn't on. Didn't feel quite like playing Hearthstone. So I popped that back in and. You know, I've gained such an appreciation for that game. I, yeah. What level are you now? I think I just hit 12 this afternoon. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I'm behind now. Yeah, I don't know that Chris has been playing either. It's been... I, I really didn't like the game at first because the motion control was just... I felt super slu- like just loose to me, and I was having sure. a hard time with dying. I'd die so much because I couldn't track anyone that was moving. And then when you add in the swimming under the ink element... There's yeah. no way. But I've gotten a lot better. Has that gotten better? Oh, yeah. I've been utilizing that move myself, kind of like camping around corners, being mindful of where I'm seeing ink come from, and then I just camp, pop out, shoot, get them, and then I just go on my merry way. 
So I've seen my win rate go up substantially. But the other nice. th- the thing that's... That's fun that there's those win streaks too, right? Yeah, there's... Because, have you noticed those? There's something on the side of the screen that says, like, it, you're heating so up, the more essentially. Games that you, yeah, the more games that you win, you'll actually get uh, modifiers on the points or XP that you get. Mm-hmm. So if you have a higher win streak, uh, you're earning more. So it's definitely encouragement to... Uh, however, like... It's, as soon as you lose one, it doesn't just drop down to zero. Yeah. It just takes it down a tick. So it just kind of rewards like thoughtful gameplay, and I, I really appreciate that. I think I got up to a s- plus 7.5. Uh, that's very good. So that was good. But the other thing that's kind of irking me today, I've noticed it really like more so than any other day, is that the connection was just bad all day and super Oh, well, it's Nintendo, lobbies. you know. It's Nintendo on the weekend. Like, I don't know. Like, Nintendo... I almost feel like as much as I love Splatoon and appreciate what it's doing for a game that's like basically based around online play, it's a gutsy call for Nintendo. They're trying to get into the modern age, I guess, so to speak. And, uh, and, but they've, they've historically done horribly when it comes to matchmaking and it really shows here. Plus like you're playing on Japanese servers, it appears. Yeah. And that just seems foolish, especially when, you know, Nintendo has some pretty solid ground in America. Yeah, you know, I've uh I don't I think that they sorry to interrupt you, but you think they look at the numbers and they would set up some sort of, you know, Dedicated local servers, servers here, regional servers. Yeah. I I don't I haven't looked at numbers sales numbers for this game, but I've actually seen multiple people that I I have played with in separate days that like it's not just the same day all happen across that same person later on. So I don't know right. how big this game is. I haven't looked into the sales, but yeah, you, I'd like to see the sales because it's a game that should do well. I feel it. I'm, it's it's a lot of fun. I'm having a lot. The fact of, fun. of the matter is, is there's probably not that many we use out there in the living room that yeah you know aren't aren't playing Disney Infinity. And I don't know that or this Skylanders <clears throat> Skylanders too. Yeah, I don't know that this would drive a console sale. This game, no, you know, so not for me. No way. Mm-mm. But it's a lot of fun getting into. I check it daily at least to see what new clothes there are because each clothes, each set of clothes, yeah. uh, has a different buff on it. You can kind of min max in that sense too, and then you have nice uh, tiered clothing. I guess you have anything. Anytime I think about checking into a Nintendo game daily, I think of Animal Crossing. Yep. I'm just like God. Uh, you just feel like such an ass after doing that for a a, a month. Yeah, you really do. But this game, uh, it, it's a lot of fun. I am appreciating it more and more as time goes on. The matchmaking, both from a network connection sort of standpoint, I get a lot yeah. of lag that sits in there. I, I noticed that big time today. But also, and if only if only they gave you a wired connection. Yeah, <laughs> you know, you have to go over Wi-Fi. Yeah, so there's that, and uh, the matchmaking itself in terms of the ranks of players you go up against Mm -hmm. i was getting smoked by teams of like they had there's so there's teams of four they would have at least two 20s and our team would have not a single 20 a couple of rank 11s highest 15 yeah so they got a lot a lot better gear yeah and i think the gear plays a big big uh, role in everything oh for sure it does because you don't just unlock one perk on the upper echelon gear you get you know, four. Three, I think it max is three. You get the main one, or and then you four, get four, right. and then you get yeah, right, yeah. So it's well, big time. And the other yep, thing, I want to, I want to play that game some more. I would recommend it. I'm, a, I'm liking it a lot. The ranked play, not so much. I don't think I'll ever play the ranked. Just played one match the other day, and if you don't win, you get nothing. You get no coins. Ooh. You get no. Uh, experience it's brutal. so I, I don't what know. are the rewards for playing ranked i mean you get your you rank up out? i mean that's kind of yeah, it that's it I, wow. I didn't see anything else i haven't delved too much into it but i played one game and when i saw i didn't get experience i was like i have no interest in this i'm not gonna sit here and gamble on leveling up you know yeah that's one thing that we should probably i mean that i can say confidently is that you know if you have any interest in playing this game, play it right now while it's hot because I'm pretty sure that this game has a short fuse because it's Nintendo, it's online, and uh, they're not very well known for patching things outside of apparently Smash Brothers right now, throwing in Roy and Ryu. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, you know, and I don't, I don't know if they're notorious in that game for doing balance changes. I guess they haven't really had the opportunity outside of the Wii, but. 
um, with Brawl. Yeah, Brawl so. would be the only one. Yeah, so um, yeah, so we uh, we got on with uh, the Roth brothers, a few of our friends, and played a game called <laughs> Ark Survival, which is on the top uh, of Steam uh, purchases lately. Yeah, it really got up there, and. And it stayed up there, so it caught the rust fever. It really did, and throughout the Steam sale even, you know. So it's maintaining its, like, top purchased status through that. Yeah. So it's kind of impressive. Yeah, it is. Um, so we both played the game. Um, uh, <laughs> I, I am not a huge fan of it. I enjoyed Rust immensely. This game does something kind of smart, but also kind of different in that... If you've ever played Rust, the whole there's a really big fear of dying in the game because you lose all the gear that you have, and if they get into your house where you store all your things, if you know some enemies do, then you know they loot it like bandits. Here I, we're playing on a PVE server, thank God, to start out because the game it didn't feel as intense. You know, I felt like I was being killed for. I mean, I guess maybe I felt this way in Rust, too. Like, I didn't know, like, which creatures or zones were dangerous. But this game is just, like, you know, you're naked, you're out there, you'll 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 die very quickly because there's a lot to micromanage in the game. Oh, yeah. You have so many different, um, I don't know, metrics? I don't know how you... <laughs> you have so many yeah, pools no, it's a little to like, keep Yeah, full. you have a lot of bars to worry about. You know, it's like your stamina bar, your health bar, your thirst bar, and they deplete so quickly. Yeah. It's ridiculous. I mean, at least when you're naked. I was naked in that whole game, much much like real life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I saw some of that when we were in Minnesota. It was very yeah, uncomfortable. Yeah. Well, I just bask in the glory, my friend, while you can. I, I know. It's a regret that I live to this day. I know. So yeah, I have my problems. There's there's a there's a leveling up system which, I mean, doesn't uh, at least helps you feel like you're progressing in the game, like you're learning new schematics. Like now that I've learned how to make a shirt, my character just knows how to make a shirt forever, yeah, permanently. And I be- yeah, I believe that that carries over to any server that you go on to, but I'm not positive mm. about that also the game is very very taxing on my video card i do not have a bad video card yep same here i had to turn the settings down to medium i was like what i'm not seeing it in game either the textures don't we look should, that yeah. good it's very unoptimized it's early access you know i'd like to talk about that at some point too this kind of early access bs that's happening right now because i've been screwed over a fair amount of times so i tried to get the refund on steam and it was so convoluted to go about that that i was just like okay i'll do this another day was that uh before or after their newest refund policy I think it was after because I just checked it out oh. on uh, on the internets and they said the internets told me that it was post. It was just it was Tuesday, I think. Yeah, it was a couple of weeks or this last Tuesday before last. I don't know. No, it was yesterday. It was yesterday, yesterday evening that I tried it. Oh, okay. So um, I might go back in just to you know understand how that works. But anyways, back to Ark. What are your thoughts on it so far? You know, I feel the same as you. Uh, in Rust, there wasn't as many threats at any given time. Yeah. You know, there was just the zombies, and you had to go through specific densely populated areas for that to be a yeah. real issue. Yeah, now there aren't even zombies in Rust. Oh, really? Yeah, it's just uh, radiated animals. Interesting. So it's more focusing on the PvP issue. Yeah, see, I, uh, I like that. Which is really interesting. But I wanted to yeah. try this out because on its face it sounded kind of interesting. Yeah. You basically start out as a naked caveman, and if you're at all horrifyingly disfigured like our friend Gritty, you have rotisserie chickens for forearms and those will yeah. serve you well in the wilderness. Oh, the character creation. Oh, really? <laughs> no, I'm... <laughs> okay, I was gonna say, like, it didn't seem like in character <laughs> creation in, like, that bizarre micro lab of Dr. Jekyll that you're... <laughs> you can make just these horribly disfigured <laughs> humanoids. I appreciated uh, that very much. I mean, yeah, it was lols. Like, uh, Grady looked like Popeye. Miles, of course, <laughs> showed the, the, like, smoking hot brunette. And I was essentially Cro Magnon 2.0, <laughs> Moradin. You know, yeah. like I was just like a, like a 
like a dwarven adventurer, I guess. I don't know. A wall of men. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. Uh, it was a, I like, sh- if there was a human burger, I would have been ripe for it. <laughs> it was good. It was very good. I actually, yeah. I, uh, strum, that's the past tense of stream we determined. I strum us playing that. <laughs> no, you didn't really. I did. Yeah. Wow. And I was watching it last night actually to see what exactly had been captured. And I, was just randomly, you know, clicking throughout periods of the archived or the past broadcast, and I happened to click right when I had given you the spear. So you were sitting there in our house, and you were just like, <laughs> a fine yeah, thrust. This, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got that? Yeah, I got that Very on good. tape. Good. Nice. We need that. So maybe yeah. we could link that in the in the show notes, because oh, yeah. it was pretty hilarious. Uh, I'd, li- I'd like to put that audio in the... Uh... <laughs> in the podcast at some point just uh, awkwardly yeah. cut it uh, in uh, a fine thrust yeah it was pretty uh, amazing yeah. <laughs> um yeah so anyways i don't i'm gonna try and ask for a refund on that game i'm sorry roth brothers but um i mean i i just don't have any interest right now and i'm not gonna I've, if it and if it if it gets any better i'm sure i'll try it out again because i enjoyed rust but at this point if i want that kind of flavor in a game you're just gonna go i'm going to, to go to rust yeah because i already you know i forget how many hours it was I, it was something ridiculous i, I want to say it was like 270 hours but I oh need to my god <laughs> so all right that game was completely obsessive for me yeah i remember you, you're you're always worried about you know if if a bandit on the server found a way to break into your base like just gotta check it in the morning. Yeah, you just gonna let see it go. if it's okay. Oh, I might as well do some farming while nobody's on. Like, oh, it's just brutal. I remember you and Austin and Zach were really into that game. I yeah. that one didn't catch me because of the hackers and stuff. But see, I think that now that those have been evened out, like what I love about that, like in the PvP server, is that it 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 so easily creates stories you know right. yeah yeah like you you have these stories that you share these events that you share where like you trick a you know like this naked guy into like uh collecting wood for you for food You're like okay yeah just go out there and collect you know spend 30 minutes collecting wood bring it back and we'll give you some food and he becomes your indentured servant for like two hours uh, and then you, you, you know, actually like, did that or are you just, Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sean. Absolutely. Like, it's just like, so like just the social situations. And then like, I, you know, there's, there were times when I was on the other end, you know, where I'd like just be a full group of Kevlar up M 14s, you know, look at me and they're like, Hey dude, what's up? What are you doing in our, in our area? Like, well, I didn't <laughs> know this is your area. Like I'm just walking around. I'm trying to find my own space. Okay. Well, you know, good luck with that. Just you see that place over here and this place here. Just you can't come in this place. Otherwise, we'll just kill you. Like, OK, that sounds good. I'll do that. And they're like, all right, good luck. And they like threw me like a bunch of food, like just little like, you know, like how high you are up on the totem pole yeah. on your server is it just creates such good stories. I want to I want to play it again sometime. I yeah you had talked about that and uh, I I think I'd be interested in revisiting that for like E3 and kind of giving it a or not E3 I'm for sorry E3, that's on sure. the brain uh, extra life oh extra life sure so single E one L extra life yeah when is extra life um I will have to look I haven't started anything for like that this August year. or September it's in or something October like that. or November mm. okay that would be interesting yeah. So, but as far as art goes, just to round up on my thoughts, I I like the idea that you have the all the different dinosaurs. That's kind of a fun dynamic. You got some flying ones, you got some swimming ones, you got a megalodon in there for Christ's sake. Yeah, the I, the iconic T Rex, T Rex, the yeah. uh, Dilophosaur. I even heard that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they spit like, on and you. I was like, huh, huh. <laughs> so yeah, it's a. Uh, it's a very unforgiving game. It is absolutely. Sure. I just found myself so demoralized. I was like, I don't. What am I doing with yeah, my evenings? I don't even know. But yeah, it, there's there's some problems with that. Like especially like harvesting is such a big component of those games. To you know like go out and like just run through bushes and not know that you're gonna get a specific component that you need out of one thing is that it's, you know, RNG-based is really demoralizing. Well, is that, and just the grinding of experience is 
unbelievable. Pretty brutal. It takes so long. So we're sitting. Basically, we've already, like, we plateaued so early. We got our cloth armor, and then we had spears and slingshots for, like, probably about at least four or five hours of in-game time spent trying to level up. A true Neanderthal army. Yeah, and I just, the, the experience needs to come down. They need to condense the leveling experience so you can get up there faster and actually do cool things. Yeah. And... I don't know. I'm I'm kind of checked out right now as well. I, I, it seems like such a chore to play that game. So I'll probably yep. be putting that on the back burner. I know, and it's, you know, like, at least some good memories were made in it. You know, like, that's definitely a game where, like, you know, any game that has you just kind of figuring things out with friends is always ripe with opportunity for, you know, memories to be made. Like, we, uh, we, we dragged a giant crocodile dinosaur. Not we. You. Oh, okay. <laughs> I guess I'll shoulder the blame on that one. I have that on the Twitch um, stream too, and oh, it is Lord. hilarious. Yeah, it's pretty funny. So, and there's, uh, you know, the game's quite buggy. So we have this house, and he's just sticking his head through the geometry of the house, trying to nab at us, and we're like poking him with our little toothpicks. If the game was a little bit more clear about what it was trying to encourage you to do. Even as an open world game, they just have so many systems that you need to worry about. It feels like a tech demo for a game that will be released in a year. Yeah, yeah. So, but that's what you get with early access games, and let that lesson be learned. Yeah, I I don't know. I think I played over two hours, so I don't know if I'll be able to refund it. So I might have to eat this one, but, you know, that's okay. We had some fun with it. Yeah, and you can always come back to it in a year. Mm -hmm. See where it's at, just like Rust. So, um, well, we're going to try and keep it a relatively short podcast for all the content that we want to talk about after E3. It's a super exciting time. Release dates were announced. We saw some beautiful footage, a lot of games that we were excited for and that we had previously talked about, even with my, uh, my computer cutting out. Um, there are a lot of exciting things uh, on the horizon, and we're going to be talking about them uh, after the break here. Yep. So stay with us. See ya on the other side. Boink. Hey guys, we're back and we're here to talk about the blowout that is E3 hell of a good year it seemed would you what were your emotions miles during all the announcements i uh the fallout one i was making lots of e noises and clapping i guess yeah you and i were pretty much live tweeting except not we are live facebook posting commenting sure and then we and started we started to get on to the um to the twitter sphere at daily grindcast at daily ah. grindcast so yeah follow us on there we'll um, quite often post thoughts about games and uh gaming news uh and just some little good old snippets yeah little, little triumphs in our gaming lives yeah yeah that's exactly right so um i just uh decided that in celebration of e3 i'm going to pour a 17 percent alcohol beer so oh yeah you better finish this thing quick <laughs> i know i can't be yeah yeah it's, i can't be held liable again for any wanderings but uncle jacob stout from avery brewing company as part of their annual berry barrel age series 16.9 percent alcohol and we'll we'll taste this puppy in a second here but yeah so e3 my friend what just hold on what do they put in that like do they just like spill a little gasoline into the barrel before yeah. they cask you no know, i think the brewing the brewing process essentially uh what happens is there's a whole lot of sugar and quite possibly several batches that go into uh brewing this beer and then really active yeast that really just wants to eat it up you really need a special yeast in fact perhaps even a couple um you know additions of yeast because yeast doesn't like high alcohol uh environments that often Mm -hmm. uh so you need a special kind of yeast oftentimes with some of the bigger beers if it's appropriate they'll finish it with a champagne yeast that's a little stronger i don't know what they did for this specific beer oftentimes too sometimes the uh depending on how long it's been aged you get what's called in the in the barrel uh the angel's share 
the belief was that angels or the legend was that angels came in and took uh, a portion of the liquid so you would put a certain amount of liquid in and then of course there would be a certain amount of evaporation kind of that happened over time or you know like a a condensing of the the liquid huh. and so I've that was that term before but yeah. I've never known the context really fun legends out there when it comes to alcohol and a lot of little superstitions that really make for interesting tidbits <clears throat> so yeah anyways uh E3 E3 so this is the one time a year that you know it makes me feel like a kid again Absolutely. Like, because I always go back to the times when I would, you know, read the magazines, uh, Nintendo Power or uh, Electronic, Electronic yep. Gaming Monthly. Yep. And then um, Game Pro. Yep. Uh, and you would just get super excited about these announcements, and that just carries over, you know. When you just get to see where gaming is headed and the experiences that you will be having in the future and just sort of dream about it and get super excited about the experiences that you'll have. And this this uh, this E3 was perhaps the best in recent memory as far as I, yeah I'd say I'm that concerned too. yeah others have kind of gone by the wayside have not kept caught my attention it's just kind of oh E3 is this week you know, that's because they learned in the past couple of years it seems that it's about the games you know and and both Xbox and PlayStation uh, Microsoft and Sony the heavy hitters is I guess they're the ones that. We definitely need to point to it because there's been so much sort of mixed messaging about uh, the the their consoles being media systems, maybe not showing enough about games, and they realized and checked it. It's you know it's good that they they seemed at the start you know they were definitely wanting to take over the living room and have these media hubs and give you access to all the streaming uh, services like Netflix and HBO Go, Amazon Prime Instant Video. Yeah, and they got it all out of the way now, you know. What are they left with? Games. Yeah, I mean, the at the core functionality of the console, I, I'm glad to see that's coming into the forefront and we have some exciting titles, some exclusivity sitting in there, so that's kind of interesting as well. Yeah. So let's uh let's just go through chronologically and just talk about some of the games we're really excited for from the press junkets as some of the events and uh i guess we can start off with bethesda if that's all right with you yeah i'm good with that okay so i mean they opened with you know a game near and dear to a lot of people's hearts doom yeah you know back i don't know i thought i would be more excited and Mm -hmm. then i saw it in the gameplay and i was like wow that looks really pretty and everything but outside of that it just Doom is Doom in my mind. Yeah. And it's just, I don't, I, in my mind, it's a, it's a glory day that's like had its time and has its little place on the sure. shelf. But you know, just, we say I, that, but then, you know, playing a game and I didn't finish it, unfortunately, but it was much lauded, was the recent Wolfenstein game. Yeah, I've heard you actually had mentioned that on a different podcast. I think not the not the day the grind. It was a different podcast we used to do. Yeah, and it's uh you know there's there's definitely a a place for those super tight old school shooters. And I had a like I had a blast with my time in Wolfenstein, and it's one of the games that I would like to go back and finish sometime. I think there's a place out there or games like that, you know. I guess what I should say is that with the congestion of like games in general and how many are competing for your time, right. I had to Doom's be Doom's not high up there. Right. It's like a matter of being selective and it might be kind of dismissive to say that, but on the same token, I want to maximize my enjoyment of the games that I do a lot right. of time for. It, it's tough, you know, but yeah. this was not one that's a big winner for me, and uh, I'll be passing on it. Probably. I think it might be a really fun thing to get a year and a half down the line when it's on Steam sale. Yep, that's right? exactly and, right. And uh, roll through maybe four or five hours of it, see how it sticks. Yeah, that's kind of, I, I like that model of being able to test games at low risk and putting them off on the back burner, or potentially not even on the back burner. They they find their merry way there through way of Steam sales. They're not. Well, I think we find that to be a necessary part of gaming. Now you cannot play everything anymore. No, <laughs> not even close. Not so, even close. Um, yeah, same for me. So, um, Dishonored Two was announced. 
Yeah, I uh, did. You watch the trailer for that one? Yeah, I did. I thought. I mean, the the CGI trailer looked really wow. great. You get to yeah. do a new uh, new female character, right? Hey, <laughs> you're into that. Always into that. No, I uh, I watched the trailer and then I actually watched it again when I was going through. Like, a, a YouTube had a, like an aggregate of a bunch of the different trailers that sure. were aired this week, and I came across that one again. And on second viewing. I had a little tinge of like, ooh, ooh, that's kind of cool. But I don't know. I played the first Dishonored, but this, again, going back to what I said earlier, I just don't know that it's going to make the cut. Right. Um, yep, I understand. Our listeners understand. As soon as I hear that little tinge in your voice, I know where you're going with it. What's uh, that tinge? Oh, just it's to... just like, I, I, I would like to play it. I don't have time. The apprehension um, of like committing to another game. Right. right. Even <laughs> like one that might only be like 25 hours, like Dishonored. You yeah. Know? So... Yeah. Where are you at on it? I I still haven't beat the first Dishonored. I'm apparently becoming notorious for saying that I haven't beat games. You're um, a serial not beater. Yeah, it's really it's really pretty horrible. But um I like the concept a lot. Uh I liked the systems in Dishonored. I hope they fix some of the stealth issues in Dishonored that we ran yeah. into. Mm-hmm. Um where I, you it, wouldn't know if you were you know, it encouraged you to play the game stealthily. It encouraged you to try that out, but it didn't give you a good indicator as to if you were stealth or not. Yep, I I ran into that so much. And on Dishonored, I really don't like stealth games too much. I find myself too impatient to go through with remaining stealth throughout the entirety of any one part of sure. the mission or quest. And so in that game, I really I was committed, man. I was committed so hard. Because it was really satisfying to get behind someone, and just, you know the animations and dishonor yeah. and the art so style. Satisfying. The art style yeah. is just beautiful. Like, had a really cool art style to it. Um, I'm trying to think of what I could liken it towards. Is it was just it was in my it was mind like it was grungy, almost kind of Gears of War meets it, Moby Dick kind of. Yeah, because the 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 whale oil the was whaling, such a big part of uh, right. it, and the industrial sort of revolution setting time setting of that uh, steampunk first game yeah steampunk but you know i i was really committed to being stealth in that game but like you said it would just i would quickly turns into a shit show right so i was like well what's the point i i wanted to so much but it just went out the window so many times and i'd try it multiple times and that's not that's not like me usually i just kind of steamroll through games because i want to get on to the next one yeah but in this game, I really stuck with it, and then about halfway through the game, I was like, I just, it's such a waste of time sitting here and restarting the mission to right. maintain the stealth. So Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'll definitely come around to it. I won't jump on board as easily as last time. See how it goes. And Fallout 4? Yep. I, uh, I, I'm I glad that it's coming out this fall. It'll be something to play. And... Obviously, it's Fallout, so right. I'm probably going to sink... I'm I'm guessing I'll probably sink 40 hours into this game, at least. Into Fallout um, 4? Yeah. Yeah, probably more than that. I mean, if you're trying to beat it. Yeah, because I got, I got the Platinum Trophy. I think it was the first Platinum Trophy I got on this game back on PlayStation 3. You mean on Fallout 3? Yeah, yeah, on Fallout yeah. 3. Yeah. So, uh, was, What's the uh, release date on this game? It is November 10th, 2015. Okay, yeah, there's a lot of things coming out. Uh, I think it's November 10th or 11th or something like that. There's a lot of things that come out that time. Uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider comes out. We'll talk about that game in a little bit. I was sad to find that yeah. release date out. I yeah, was that's bummed. Pretty, pretty gut-wrenching. <laughs> yep. Yeah, Fallout 4, I mean, what did you think of the systems that they showed? The crafting system? You know, the crafting system, I'm not... I just don't really like crafting that much because... I just don't consider myself too creative of a person, I guess, and so they usually just feel kind of faffy to me. I like okay. more like utility. Rather get to the meat and potatoes. Yeah, so I'm not huge on that, but the gun thing looked awesome. The fact what do you that you mean can the gu- oh the out. modifying the gun, yeah, yeah. So I'm looking forward. And the cool to thing that. was that you know that just like if you were to imagine you know Skyrim or Fallout Three, like the game is populated with all these interactable objects. Uh, mm-hmm. You could pick up these different objects, and based on what they were, you know, whether it's like a tin can or a pencil sharpener or something, you could utilize that to craft different components of guns and then slap those modifications onto whatever gun you wanted. So it kind of had, 
it kind of had it like a, a do it yourself Borderlands thing. And it was a st- it's a stark contrast to what you were talking about earlier with Ark, where you have to kind of run around and find materials you're not guaranteed to always get. Yeah, you so, know exactly what you're looking for. Yeah, you just get either. I think it was like you can get metal from a toy car or like a tin can or something. Right. So it was. It's a lot more flexible. It's pretty so, cool. No, I'm looking forward to it. The color palette seems a lot more, you know, brightened up in Fallout mm-hmm. 3 and New Vegas. It was very, it had that, like, washed out sepia tone sort of, you know, it was yeah. just very... To be fair, a lot of what we've seen is, quote unquote, before the bombs drop. That's So there true. might be a little bit of a color palette swap that is yet to be determined. Yeah, before it washes out. Yeah. I, uh... I love that idea, though, of, like coming in to Fallout as a newer player, uh, being there before the bombs drop and sort of experiencing that. I'm sure there will be several Easter eggs and throwbacks to later games, you know. Mm-hmm. But I'll, be, I'll essentially be there at the origin story, which is pretty cool. I actually... <laughs> what did you think about the creation, the, color, the oh, character creation yeah, screen? I love that. That was great. So essentially for people that haven't seen it, um, you have a situation where a uh, husband and wife are looking in the mirror and uh you know complimenting each other on teasing each other in a very uh husbandy wifey kind of way mm-hmm. uh and um you would modify uh their looks and then based on their looks i think it would determine what your child looked like right yeah that's what they said yep yeah so i think essentially i mean that sets it up right for the for the inevitable uh, mom or dad dies and you play as the kid, right? Yeah, that's definitely going to happen. I mean, right? I... It, it has to because it's all the gameplay footage it showed you, you know, selecting what was what was the character you were going to play and uh you uh, he picked the dad, the male, and mm-hmm. then um they mentioned that this would affect the way your child looked and how the, you know, how you look as a an offspring, and I believe it said that you get into the vault, and then two hundred years later you're out of the vault. So yeah, maybe there's a you lot of die, and then you play as a kid. I don't know. We'll see. I guess. But... Yeah, that's interesting. There's a lot of open ended questions there. I think, but yeah, I love those little minor Bethesda touches. So the other touch, they had mentioned that they recorded a bunch of. I guess last names, maybe it was first names too. Right, it was a hundred, a hundred first names. Oh, okay. It was like it was like a, or no, what did they say? It was either a hundred or a thousand of the most common, commonly used, used names, first names. So they would just like integrate that into the speech. I'm hoping so, you know. Obviously, it's a minor touch that something that might be kind of forgettable, but I'm hoping that it doesn't turn into kind of a Siri thing where it's like, "Hello, <laughs> Sean." You know, like a really emotionless kind of generated, right? right. Yeah, like it just so doesn't do you, flow. Do you think they have Miles in there? Uh, I don't know. I don't even know if they would have Sean in there. To be honest, Fallout Four: The hype is real. It, it looks beautiful. If you haven't seen a video of it, uh, just go look at it. I love the new conversation system that kind of steals from Telltale games, mm-hmm. uh, where you have the four responses mapped to the you know A B X Y buttons. Right. Yep. Or, or, or triangle, yeah. circle, X. Yeah. That, uh, um, yep, but that takes so much longer to say. The four buttons. <laughs> um, so that was kind of Bethesda in a nutshell. And Fallout 4 looks incredible. It's a day one purchase for me, as I mentioned. Um, I already pre-ordered it, so yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm in. Let's I mentioned do it. that, too. Yeah. So after that, Wait, I... Sorry, what what uh, are you getting at? Are you getting on the PC? Oh, yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Are you getting a new... Your, I'll get be swapping I, out video cards. Yeah, too? I think so. I'm gonna be kind of optimizing my computer and getting a new video card probably this summer. So okay. Um, so I'll be prepped. I don't know which is gonna be, but I'll be set to go. Cool, cool. Yeah. So let's talk about early Monday morning. Microsoft had their conference, and holy moly! Yeah, set it off. Go ahead. 
I feel like they just knocked it out of the park. Like, we'll talk about some contrast between the two heavy hitters, Microsoft and Sony, but, I mean, Microsoft, again, just brought the games. Like, they were just, like, game, game, game. And they were, and the difference that I saw, again, we'll, again, we'll talk about it a little bit with PlayStation and some of the dates, but they definitely focused on a lot of the games that they were delivering this year, you know, mm-hmm. um, which, uh, you know, is, is really nice because it's not too far off in the future, it's pretty much like a guarantee that you'll get those games if they're releasing this year. It's not just like, you know, we showed The Last Guardian and then it's coming out, you know, 2016. Yeah, you know, yeah. like, we'll tell you about it in 2016 that we have a March 2017 release, you know, so. Yeah, yeah. I, they slapped I like... a lot of dates on their games. Mm-hmm. I think that's really empowering for the gamers and uh, it puts a finite sort of you know, it turns that, that hourglass over and it says, this when this is coming, that, what I just saw, it's coming here. It's going right. to be in my hands yep. here. Yep. You can so, plan on it. Like, you mm-hmm. can say, this is what I'm doing this day. Yeah, so, so I, I like that direction rather than more like the dangling, ambiguously nebulous, dangling carrot thing, you know? Right. So they opened right away with Halo 5. Yeah, and how did you feel about that? That game looks incredible. Like the the fidelity on the visuals on that game, it looks insane. I love the open dialogue as you were going through the mission. I love the idea that there's this sort of cat and mouse game with uh, a new Spartan team and Master Chief, and presumably you'll play you'll be playing as both parties, just like in the second one or second one when you were the arbiter. Yeah, and... yeah, and I feel like so I feel like what they're probably getting into is they're getting into a situation where you can play, have four player co op. It's not local. Yeah, that's that's, yeah, that's, that's kind of a point bummer. I read about yeah, yeah, um, but four player co op where each person controls one of the Spartans. Even if you're playing two player co op, each person has another Spartan that they can give orders to. Oh, so that would be kind of like a, a, la like a Ghost Rainbow Recon. Six game. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, interesting. I think that they actually brought on the uh, Star Wars Republic Commando designer to do some of this work. I think he's actually the creative designer behind Halo Five. So that's I don't know if you ever played that game, but it was a very very good squad based Star Wars game where you played some of the clone troopers, and they each had their own sort of uh, specialty and. Uh, you know, like kind of uh, like getting a little old school here, but brute force on the Xbox. I don't, I don't know if you ever that. played that either, game, yeah. yeah. But it was kind of a squad based. Uh, each person had their own specialty. You know, that was tied to their identity as a character. Mm-hmm. You know, so you got the sniper, the heavy, the SMG assault guy. You know, so um, and then so we have to presume that there's some sort of co-op, four player cooperative on the other side, on Master Chief's side. So I would assume that's where the Arbiter comes in. Ooh, yeah, that'd yeah. be kind of fun. Yep, maybe there's another um, Covenant uh, well, playable would have character. To be, right? Yeah, and then yeah, because he's kind of alone. But maybe it could be, you know, it could be some sort of human. Cortana, what you... like made into manifest like, exactly. Yeah. Yep. Uh, or Doctor Halsey. I think actually, I think she might have perished. I, I thought I, she did. Yeah. Yeah. She might have I don't know, spoiler, I don't know. I don't know. It's kind I, of an older cares? game. Yeah. 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 You, and we have like Halo four 5. listeners, so. <laughs> All right. Um, so anyways, Halo 5, uh, it looks insane. Some of the weapons. I love that they've implemented kind of this, like, they've kind of stolen from Destiny a little bit. Because there's this part where uh, one of the Spartans, uh, like, jumps up and kind of hovers for a little bit. And makes, like, a target landing zone. And just kind of decimates everyone in the area. So he kind of, like, shoots down, shoots himself down like a rocket. It seems like there's a lot more sort of uh, kind of a, you know, thrown around word, but uh, a, like a visceral experience where it feels a little bit more sort of Gears of War, like kind of meaty combat, you know? You know, I, I'm glad you say that because I say I mentioned that term meaty and meaty more so than visceral because, sure. I don't know, I just like the word meaty. Well, Gears of War feels meaty if it's not for the chainsaw cutting through meat, you know? Like yeah, exactly. Right, it feels, like, heavy, like there's sort of physical well, some, blunt some force. some oomph behind it, yeah, you know? Like, exactly. I feel good about... Yeah. I, I noticed that a lot in um, Heroes of the Storm. 
Yeah. There's certain abilities that I cast, and, and I, when, especially when I get a kill, but even not. The sound it's effects like, just kind of... Like, that just that yeah. felt really good. Right. And it's, just and like, it's mostly damn. due to the sound, right? You know, yeah. Like, it's so much due to the sound. But I will say this, that after our last podcast, you know, I'm way more jazzed about playing Halo 5 now than I was, you know... On the last is like, yeah, just take my two turtle doves as a sacrifice. I'll just, you know, I'll play your game. Like, yeah. but now I'm I'm pretty enthusiastic about at least getting some time in the game. So, I guess my restraint with this game is the fact that I've read. I don't know that this is confirmed, but I've read that the local co-op is not going to be an option because something to do with the frame rates and maintaining that 60 silky smooth 60 frames per second. Yeah, it's hard to do in this modern age when you're trying to make such a singular experience Mm -hmm. with a connection. So to split that and to to render all those frames... uh, you uh, you know, you're effectively halving your processing power. Yeah, it's it's tough to do. Um... It's a, yeah, it's a bummer, and it's outside of what Halo is known for, you know, mm-hmm. that co-op experience. But we're in a day now where, like, not as many gamers get together to play their games uh, yeah, I would on the couch. Say that. Yep. And I would rather the, exp- the shared online experience be tight and seamless mm-hmm. than worry about, you know, local co-op. Being slightly, like, kind of diluted. Right. Mm-hmm. I would rather them just say like we're not going to do it, and we're going to make we're going to spend our efforts a little bit more on making the co-op really tight online. That's that's uh, yeah. I don't that's know. Where I that's, stand. That's a struggle for me. Do you have someone that you I mean historically have played and enjoyed the Halo franchise with outside of my college days and high school days? No, because I don't stay in touch with any of those guys anymore. Uh-huh. So right now it's like it's just the online component for me, which is why I'm fine with it. You know, you've had the you have those friends that you've held on to for a while. I've just like left mine behind, so it's oh it's, god, uh, are you gonna leave me behind? Eventually, when I have no use for you, like yes. a used potion. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh my yeah, gosh, utilitarian. Oh man, uh, yeah. there's gonna be an empty mana bottle lying just, on the side just, of the road. Just or a something. husk. Just a husk. <laughs> So yeah, Hello Five. Let's move on to something else. Did I want to quickly talk about this game that they showed a trailer for, uh, which is uh, Recore? Did you see the trailer for this? Recore. I see. I, I watched them all after work and kind of a, and, and there's a lot obviously, sure. so it kind of blurred together. But Recore just just so uh, it's going to be a new IP from Kenji Inafune, the creators of the Metroid Prime series, on mm-hmm. a brand new IP. So it's called Recore. Uh, we didn't see any gameplay. Essentially, it looks like it's a female protagonist. Looks kind of young, like an Ellie from. Uh, oh, uh, Last of Us. Last of Us. There's yeah. The, yeah, there's the booze getting to me. Here we go. <laughs> Slow down. Yeah, the beer's delicious, by the way. Oh, uh, good. You drink so, pure gasoline. That's right. Yeah. Yes. Puts hair on your chest again. <laughs> oh, okay. I did see this. I just pulled it up. Yes, I did yeah, see this. Okay. I love the visual. The visual is beautiful. The It seems like the core gameplay is that um, you have these cores of the remnants of a tech age of humanity, and there are these shiny blue or red orbs, obviously blue being good, red being bad. The blue orbs, if one of your essentially what seems like sidekicks die in the movie it's the heralded dog Mm -hmm. companion um (laughs) not an actual dog it's like a tech dog right it's a tech dog dog. uh he has a blue core in him he essentially releases an emp to protect the main character she picks it up and she throws it in a new uh bodice essentially a uh, new uh, carapace is the better word, and it comes to life, and the dog lives again. So, um, what what makes me kind of excited about this is not just sort of, you know, like exploring that beautiful world and seeing how the gameplay works, especially with the makers of Metroid Prime trilogy behind it. it what makes me excited is if imagine if the personality of a single core transfers from carapace to carapace, right? So, like, if the dog is all playful and, you know, caring and adoring, if that transfers over to kind of that Half-Life, th- Half-Life 2 robot kind of thing. Yeah. Right? I, was it dog? I can't remember. I think it was. was I think he was name. dog, yeah. 
and uh and just you know like kind of cares for you in that similar fashion or you have like the super aggressor like if you were to take the core out of this giant like artillery being and throw it into a dog what it <laughs> what it might do <laughs> I, I, I think that th- i think that i that premise might be really cool so that kind of reminds me of an older game that I've referenced before called Silicon Space Station. Oh, oh yeah, Space Station Space Silicon Station Valley. Station Silicon Valley, yeah. That kind of reminds me of that. So I wonder if that sort of puzzling element is going to come into it, where, or maybe not puzzler, but utility. Like you need a really aggro dog, so you're going right. to take the core out of this aggressive thing, throw it in the dog, or maybe throw it in the giant. I don't know. Right. Tank sort of bear. I love that now. idea, though. That there's so many that that there could be so many essentially mm-hmm. s- skeletons of robots mm-hmm. that you could take these friends that you have and 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 force them to inhabit these different bodies. You know. Yeah, and fit their their core to a a bigger, you know, like a the best fit, you know, right. sort of thing. So yeah. that's kind of interesting. I, I like I that idea a lot. I'll be looking out for this one. I I did watch the trailer, but. You know, yeah. it's uh, it's a ways off. They say 2016, so curious to see some gameplay for sure. Yeah, I would like to. Probably next E3. Let's be honest. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, Fallout 4, uh, real briefly, they say that Xbox is getting compatibility with mods made on PC, which is super cool. That's kind of interesting. Yeah. I wonder if they're going to be doing that on the Fallout. If they're going to be doing that as a Steam Workshop sort of thing, where it's no, going to be. No, it's a- going to be. I bet you it's going to be inherent to the idea of Windows 10, hmm. right? So you get Windows 10 as that free upgrade. Windows 10 is being heavily implemented in Xbox. There's going to be some sort of thing that allows you to just rip those off within the system. I I just hope that mods are going to be easy to install. If, if they're not installed through the Steam Workshop, right. I hope that there's some other you know mod yeah. like you don't need to go through curse yeah exactly or, right because um, i i've worked with steam workshop and it's super slick and awesome i've used it with skyrim they just like pick that out do 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 installed install and they done. update for you if right. the creator patches their mod yep. boom it's done for Pretty you slick. so yep let's hope they take a note from that I also, if you if you have an Xbox One and you're thinking about buying it, Fallout Three is included with the purchase of Fallout Four. So yeah, I saw that today. Is that just Fallout Three, or is it Fallout Three? Is there any sort of? Don't think there's any remaster, especially okay. when it comes to the announcement that came later in their uh, press event uh, that they were going to be going into backwards compatibility. Right. Um, so. Yeah, um, as of this holiday season, 100 Xbox 360 games will be fully backwards compatible and native to the Xbox One. Does so that all mean those... the physical disc? Or so you... both the physical disc and apparently, from what I've heard, is that it's attached to your gamer tag. So if you have a game that you've gotten a gamer score on, you can just download it. <laughs> yeah. So your hard well, drive a... <laughs> is going to fill up pretty quick. Well, not mine, because right. I actually I played a fair amount of games on Xbox 360, but I made a new account when I got Xbox One. Oh. I, think it was, <laughs> I think it was something as stupid as I couldn't remember the email in which I had signed up for it on, so I couldn't sure. do the forget password thing. So got I was it. like, whatever, I'm just going to... You yeah. know, make a new one. So, well, if you have the discs, they'll work. Um, and apparently, they're going to be adding like some something like thirty to sixty games every month. So, uh, the problem is, is the licensing. They need to go out and get all the licensing mm-hmm. for all these games that may so, have expired or whatever. Right. So, um, are you uh, just to touch on that real quick? So, is there any games that you might be revisiting from? Uh, oh yeah. I mean, like, I'm going to definitely take another look at my full XBLA library. Mm -hmm. Like, there's things that I bought and, like, didn't touch, you know, like, uh, or or didn't get into with enthusiasm that I'd go back and take a look at. You know, there's also things like the Halo series. Oh, no, those aren't going to be on there because they want you to buy the Master Chief collection. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but I have a few 360 games left over that would be fun to get into again. And uh, I definitely have my 
downloaded XBLA games that I'd take a look at. Um, it's a big deal for a lot of people, you know. So. Yeah, and it's just it's it effectively doubles even more so than doubles because Xbox 360 was out longer than the right their library Xbox one has been. But yeah, it's a lot yeah. more. Uh, Lot and more. it basically tells anyone owning a 360 right now that has been hesitant and be like, hey, it's okay to spend the 350 You can play mm-hmm. all those on here. A shiny new one with a yeah, new controller. Exactly. Speaking of new controllers, I actually just saw today, I was doing through going through some more E3 stuff on YouTube and saw that Xbox is releasing a... Xbox 360 Elite. Xbox Xbox, Xbox I have 360 one. on the brain. Yes. <laughs> Xbox One Elite wireless controller. Have you heard anything about yes. this? Yes. Yeah, so that was that was in their uh, their press conference. The controller looks absolutely sick. It's going to be modifiable. You can switch out the grips on the left and right thumbstick. You can switch out the D-pad. You can add extra buttons onto the back side where, you know, like not your index finger or your thumb, but you know, the middle finger to pinky, you can utilize more buttons. The controller has highly sensitive uh, inputs, and it's $150. Yeah, so, yeah. It would better you... work. <laughs> <laughs> so, would you buy that? Uh, maybe with Christmas money. <laughs> Okay, you know, like if I fair. were given, if I were given like a little something, the imaginary um, money—that's what I right. call it. Yeah, Whenever exactly. something you get for your your birthday or Christmas yeah. or graduation, maybe I don't I don't see a pressing need for it. As slick as it is, I see this geared towards more of the MLG player. As tempting as it is to get one with Halo Five, mm. I just don't know if I would be playing that game as much to justify it. Yeah, but it looks sexy. Oh my god, yeah, it does. It like, really it does. It looks really good, and all reports I've heard, podcasts that I've listened to said that it just, like, feels really good. Yeah. It's it super It feels tight. visceral, meaty. That's yep, what I've heard. Exactly. It's got some well, heft well, to it. I'd say the most meaty Xbox controller was the first one. The Duke. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the Duke. Uh, so let's, uh, I'm going to skip a couple here. Yeah, skip the ones that uh, we're not feeling. We're going so. we're gonna, to we're gonna skip Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare 2. Cause good. Yeah. I like the trailer for it. I was amused by yeah, the trailer, but sure. other than that... It's fun. As soon as the Plants vs. Zombies movie comes out, I'll go and see it. Forza Motorsport 6, we were talking about your love for Forza. Of course, this is kind of a tighter racing game than mm-hmm. uh, the Forza that you played. I want it. I really you want do. it? Okay. Mm-hmm. I mean, it looks I, pretty. It looks oh amazing. Oh, my God. I, you know, I, I saw this on a lot of the trailers, actually, this year, is that they're calling out specifically, this was filmed on a PlayStation 4 or Xbox One. This was, from, this was captured from that console. It's because so. graphics are so high fidelity now mm-hmm. that and so intense that they want you to know this is happening right now. Like yeah, whether you're no ready gimmick. for it, yeah. Whether you're ready for it or not, this is happening, and yeah, man. Uh, it was... I'm, it's, it's super exciting to see going into this fall. Now that the systems have been out for a year and more, you know, a year and change, seeing strides in the graphical field, they got to get some experience with the the hardware and the architecture. And then you see that on every console, really. It just kind of gradually oh, yeah. kind of ramps it up. And see, they push the envelope ever so slightly, and they just yeah, and then it, and then them. there's a peak, you know, there's a peak. Like, mm-hmm. what was it for 360? What was the what would you say the peak game was for 360? Hmm. Like Gears of War three or something like that. Yeah, yeah, pretty there's high always up there. those ones that stand out. Halo three was pretty early on in that console's life yeah. cycle. I just realized too that um, Halo, or I, I just heard that Halo three was actually written. For kind of a next gen console experience, and then they rolled it out on the Xbox 360. It's insane. And then, I mean, for PlayStation, it's got to be like The Last of Us or some of the Naughty Dog games, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, so I mean, there's definitely that peak, and we're just we're not even hitting our stride yet. So it's super exciting to see some of these games. Um, let's go through some of these. Uh, there's a fair amount to talk about in Xbox, but I'd like to keep the podcast a little, you know, like under control. Uh, yeah, Dark, yeah. Soul, Dark Souls Three is coming out, so that's a thing for all you people that love Dark Souls. It's I, going. It's going to be more of that. With your experience in Bloodborne, where are you on that one? You, I, you I, in or I'm not out. buying it yet. I just okay. can't. Yeah, I just can't. There's too much other stuff that. I that I know I'm gonna like that I don't want to challenge myself to a game that I know I have trouble with. Mm-hmm. So I'll go back into Bloodborne at some point during this year and give it another shot. 
Okay. Uh, but right now, you know, I, it's 2016, so. Okay. Let's, uh, from here on out, like, in the interest of keeping this as short as we can, yeah. let's just uh, do, like, stepping stone. Like, we're jumping on lily pads or something. Okay. Just touch on each game. Sure. Okay, so the division was shown. We have an yeah. open beta in December. The game's taking more time. I have enough to play. If that game comes out and it's really, really good, then I'm completely down. Uh, there's so much stuff that I know that's going to be good that's coming out soon that I'm fine with a game like Division. If I were to compare it like we did on last episodes to Rust, mm-hmm. I'm fine with it taking more time. Take all the time you need, and then when the time comes out that you're going to release it, whether that be in March or June, then I will be there ready to go. Mm-hmm. You know, So they're doing an open beta in December. That's fine. I'll dive into it. It's on Xbox first, I think, the open beta. Take all the time you want, but I'm excited for the game. Hop, skip, and jump after talking about that on length. Rainbow Six Siege. I, nothing. You got okay. nothing out of me. I mean, How about yeah, you? you know, you get Vegas and Vegas 2 free when you buy it on Xbox. The gameplay looked pretty cool. Again, kind of that visceral, kind of potent uh, shotguns in a tight corridor. It seems like all of the uh, walls and everything... Are destructible. Uh, are destructible so you can make a little hole in the wall and shoot through it get a view on where they're coming in uh, you have a squad of you know um, anti-terrorist teams coming in to defuse a bomb in the trailer the terrorists are set up kind of tower defense like ready to go ready to take on whatever comes at them yeah no i i like ctu the voiceover. comes in yeah i like that voiceover and it was very, it seemed very like interactive and contextual, but yeah. I, I just, you know... You don't see I, it working that way. Yeah, I just... And then I, I got... It just doesn't grab me, you know? And sure. something's got to really grab me for, sure. you know, to make it... To be yep. on my radar, so... Yeah, yeah, this one's a pass for me, okay. straight up. Fair enough. Um, I'm going to skip Gigantic, because even though I it's a Xbox exclusive, it looks beautiful. We don't really know much about it, except that you're kind of fighting along these really, like, gargantuan sort of minions and trying... Well, I, I think I think essentially what it is is it's essentially like a MOBA first... Mm-hmm. Pers- or That's a MOBA adventure that. game that you're trying to get your giant minion to the middle of the combat field and then kind of a showdown happens between the two gigantic minions. Anyways, they have a beta in August. Uh, you know, we'll wait to hear more. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Love the art style, but yeah, going to be waiting for that one for sure. Again, okay. see what happens. Too early. A game that's coming up rather quick: Rise of the Tomb Raider. Ooh, my God! Oh, holy Watch moly! Trailer. That trailer looks incredible. It's you know, it's got those sort of like scripted. Again, moments. we shouldn't say it's not a. It, well, I mean, yeah, it's not a trailer. It's it's kind of a it's gameplay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's definitely an engine. Of... It's not CGI. This is what you will be seeing. It's it's incredible. Like. I don't. It's just. It has that uncharted feel. I honestly, I was. I realized today when I was watching this trailer, I like the Tomb Raider, the new Tomb Raider franchise, more than, than Uncharted. uncharted. Yeah. Yep. yep. Absolutely. Kind of with you on that. Absolutely. It's and just if there's so... more exploration, more of that traversal, and mm. less shooting, like yep. Uncharted, like capping thousands of dudes yep. while you're adventuring. I'm completely into it, and that game just looks. That was one of the best looking games I saw. It's uh, just like a trailer for down to like the carabiners on her hip and everything. They're like jingling while you're like walking through the snow. Yeah. She's trudging through the snow. Like it yeah, just the only looks... thing that always gets me about that is how she's pulling the ice pick from nowhere. Oh, right? I know, <laughs> you know, I know, and like, that's what I was perfect. Gonna say. She's like, oh, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna <laughs> grab the ice. <laughs> <laughs> well, then it's just like she's sliding down the hill super quick and then catches at the, the edge right. with one arm. And it's right. like that would tear your shoulder <laughs> right out of socket. Right. But right. I don't know. I can but, let that go. But, but, we, but, yeah, it's suspension of disbelief. Mm-hmm. It's uh, un- just beautiful. I, I'm yeah. really like I had a little bit of an existential sort of. This is where uh, games are going. Well, it was that. And then just like Fallout 4 is coming out on this day, too. So it's like I, oh. I have I had a dilemma. I was like, oh, I don't shit. I don't know where to divert my time. Yeah. So I'm thinking my only rationale here is it's coming out on Xbox first. That's the exclusivity. It's got a timed yeah. exclusivity. So maybe I'll play through Fallout on PC and then maybe by the time I'm done with Fallout, month or couple months later it'll come out for pc and i'll pick it up then 
I don't know. You know, I was kind of leaning the other way. Is as as hyped as, really? as I am for Fallout, I was like, at least I know the hour kind of time frame that I'm getting into with Tomb Raider. Twelve you know? hours. You called it. No, nailed well, it the other day. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, I, twelve hours. Maybe even no, because if uh, I was wrong, then because if we were to consider, yeah, if you were to just go through the story, maybe twelve hours. Mm-hmm. If you were to consider all that sort of exploration, all those yummy you know, gubs, <laughs> yeah, all exactly. those collectibles, the exploration, the collectibles, the leveling up. You know, you got a at least a twenty-four hour, thirty-hour game there, but you know what you're getting into. Whereas mm-hmm. Fallout could turn it quickly turn into a hundred and twenty, hundred and sixty hour game. Oh yeah, you know. So I was kind of thinking about doing Tomb Raider first. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm struggling. Like I'm legitimately like, I I read that date after I've been trying to keep up with E3 this week with work and stuff, and uh, I don't I can't really watch E3 stuff on my computer. It's just not feasible you know yeah at work i saw that date i think it was the night we played arc we were talking about it and i was just like oh, oh my I heart sank a little yeah. bit and i was like oh man like that's tough <laughs> so yeah. i don't know what i'm gonna do yet we'll see i guess but it looks amazing i am yeah. all in so the nice in. thing that we see with a lot of these games is that a lot of the games that they at least highlight at the microsoft conference even though like a lot of them are known about it's just more information about games that are coming out this year. So that's kind of interesting. Um, we have a rare collection, a collection of rare games, including like Conker's Bad Fur Day, Perfect Dark, uh, Banjo-Kazooie, Viva Pinata, all these just like really solid games. 30 games for $30. Oof, that's that's hard to argue with, man. Yep. That is really hard to argue with. Yep. You, can you have... just buy it and you're like, oh, I'll just play perfect dark now i guess as you have at your leisure you know yeah so you, would you pick it up yeah it's insane value mm-hmm. it's insane yeah. value i'd skip out on a couple six packs of beer just to like you know just to have it yeah absolutely yeah. easy yeah. so let's see sea of thieves was announced by rare uh we won't talk too much about it it's a holiday 2016 release but it's by rare it's an open world kind of like team-based pirate adventure <laughs> interesting i did this did not come up on my uh this didn't come up on my trailer thing that i was again watching. they're shooting for a holiday 2016 release so it's not out there but in the video you and friends were out on an island collecting stuff foraging eventually you had your own pirate ship and you were going into a sea battle uh, manning your own ship against another group of player ship it's it seems really cool if you like that whole pirate theme. I wanted to dive into that pirate theme with Black Flag, but I ran into all the glitches, so this yeah. could be a recoup it, on that. But here you're, you know, four people, five people, maybe eight, maybe ten, operating a ship, going into combat against another one. That just seems cool. Yeah, I'd say so. I'm into that, and hopefully it's more, you know, accessible and not glitchy still a little bitter about that um i'm gonna skip over over fable legends because it sounds really cool uh right now as kind of this you know 4v1 D &D kind of experience where there's a dungeon master and four players right now the new dungeon the dragons sword coast game has me really intrigued and this one might end up by the wayside yeah, there's a lot of games that I just I start the trailer up and I'm just like, that's getting uh, nixed. Right, because it's E3 and there's a lot of it. Uh, they announced the new Gears of War. The trailer was kind of poopy. It didn't. I was just like, okay, I don't. Yeah, it's like it's not coming out till next Christmas. Just, it just felt kind why of are generic you showing to me, me gameplay? Yeah, like I, the scripted gameplay is just I don't know. It didn't grab me at all. I've never been a hu- too huge of a Gears fan, but it just right. felt kind of generic to me, and I I was just, meh, didn't catch me at all. So yeah. that's where yeah. I'm at. Also, we have a new uh, Gears of War Ultimate Edition. You'll get to play an HD remake of the Gears of War. Gears of War 1, August 25th. What's the price point on that? And they oh, I, I I don't know. I'm sure. I, I bet if I were to take a guess, it would probably be 30 or $40. I would venture towards 30 yeah, I'd say thirty would be a more. I think that'd make more sense, but yeah. we'll see. I mean, I'd play local co-op Gears of War for thirty bucks again. Yeah, I, th- I honestly, nice. I think I would too. So, lastly, we'll talk about the Hololens presentation. 
the that new was AR. Incredible, honestly. It yeah. blew my mind a little bit. Yeah, so we have this whole AR thing with from uh, Microsoft where you'll be able to put this lens uh, over your head, you know, this little, uh, what would you call it, like a visor? Yeah, like a visor, some yeah. goggles, something yeah. sort of. Yeah, except that there, it's not, it's not. You're looking at a screen. You're looking through to your world, and then it populates it with alternate reality stuff. And they showed a video of Minecraft being played on a table and manipulated essentially like you're a little god. Yeah, it was. It was. I I was like I I couldn't figure out how it worked. <laughs> it's because and this is the trick too is because nobody knows how to show virtual reality. This is why nobody knows exactly what it is unless you's, you've experienced it. Mm-hmm. You know, and I haven't. I wanted to at this last year's PAX, but the line was like five hours oh, long, yeah, so I yeah. said no. And uh, and they found a way to take a secondary camera and essentially show you what he was seeing. Yeah, the player was seeing and manipulating. And if you imagine Minecraft sitting on a table and being manipulated, being able to look underground, being able to look into the buildings that you've built, and also watch other players exist in your world. Yeah, it was it was crazy. It was it's just, just a great... You know, I don't know how often I'd spend time as that Minecraft god, yeah, but it's yeah. a really good representation of what can happen. See, I, I think that, like, when I was watching that... I thought this would be really good for, like, a game like Shogun 2 Total War. You know, like, where you're, like, overseeing a battlefield, Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like, that's the application I played out in my mind that I think would make sense. Maybe Hearthstone, you know? Like, kind of, like, manipulating the table with your hands right there. That'd be kind of fun. But that, I in Minecraft specifically, I was like, eh. Like, I didn't, I just, Minecraft to me has kind of fallen off significantly. Sure. But I I don't know I th- just think the possibilities are endless. This is a new technology. We we haven't con- you we just haven't like really theorized what is possible with it. Right. And new it hasn't are... been implemented into a gamers or anyone else's life yet. So yeah, it's all you know conjecture what it's going to be. Mm-hmm. So, but holy cow, yep. That go look at Minecraft Hololens if you want to. Have your mind blown. So, moving on. Uh, for the sake of time, let's uh, let's talk quickly about PlayStation and about some thoughts on some heavy hitters. And let's just go over like the three that we're most excited about. Why don't, why don't you start from PlayStation? No Man's Sky. I watched the the video for it, and I don't know what I had in mind for this game ahead of time. I just I had it visualize as something and we talked about it i thought of it would be something similar to spore mixed with a game like journey so you're happening across all these random uh you know basically organisms and planets so everything is just randomly generated and the other part of that would be the game journey where you would just feel so incredibly isolated and you wouldn't have any sort of contact or communication with other players. And when I watched this trailer, or, you know, it was like a, it was a demo essentially, right? Right. So it just seems so vast and overwhelmingly vast. He scrolled out, he zoomed out from the planet he was on and it just kept going. And it was, yeah, it was a universe. It It was was a universe. Yeah, it was a universe. And I, I guess I didn't, I kind of was skeptical about their claims before, but when I saw, I was just like, Oh my, like this is kind of, it was kind of like, it made me sad (laughs) in a way, like kind of like depressed. It was just like, because like then you you might you... go into the game and never meet anyone. Yeah, I, I do like the idea though. It seemed like because he was able to pick a random planet and travel to it, right? Mm-hmm. So that leads me to believe that even though they said you might not ever meet up with another player in this game during your exploration, that you could actually search for a world that your friend named because they found it first. And oh, fast right, travel right. towards it, because be why would they? Sweet. Yeah, why would they just do this thing where you say, "I want to just go to this random planet," you know? Besides, for maybe a really cool tech demo, you right. know? I feel like that's going to be implemented in the game, which 
I would like that because it would be fun to explore with a friend and go into those space battles with a friend. Like, I think that's inevitable that they need to take that into account in a game like this because it's there is an emotion behind feeling alone and feeling like you're the first one exploring this world. And you can absolutely do that, but why not give the option? And it seems like a pretty easy option to... Eh, maybe it's not so easy technically, but to just let your friends be in the same instance as you, you know? Yeah, because, like like you're saying, there's one thing to be like, oh, like, I discovered this. Boink! I'm going to put my little flag. Look at that. I named that planet. And then you're just like, yeah, that was pretty cool. Well, and you know how many people are going to come to, like, happen upon your planet and be like, it's already named. I'm going on to the next planet. I'm mm-hmm. going to go name that one. Yeah, man, like, I just... It like I said, it bums me out. It really bums me out to like think about that sort of that level of like isolation potentially. Right. So, I don't know. But that's that's absolutely in like my top three, top five of experiences with Sony or with PC, whichever. I think it's it's coming out on PlayStation Four first. Mm-hmm. I'll probably end up buying it right away yeah well we it's got right up there it's beautiful it's super cool idea and we got a good cohort on the ps4 so it's yep. a good it's a good bet absolutely how about um, you i'll take i'll take the next one um i think that i mean they showed the taking king stuff for destiny i mm-hmm. think that uh the new destiny expansion is going to be really exciting it's going to fix a lot of problems it's going to give a lot of new content um it's uh it it just shows at the year mark of sort of supporting this game what it can be and where it's going you know like if you were to look at this and then two years down the line two years two years after its release um you know how much more content is going into this game uh the pricing of the game has been a little Ooh, dodgy yeah, yeah. i yeah. didn't like that i yeah. didn't like that at all <clears throat> as far as getting some perks but enough people are complaining about it that maybe something will be done. But I'm also fine with just missing out on a few, like, dance emotes and a few shaders and just, like, paying $40 for the new expansion. Like, and a meaty expansion it is, or at least is rumored to be. Well, yeah, I mean, they're adding... Are those new subclasses for every class? There's new subclasses for every class. So okay. everyone gets... So right now, for example, my Titan only has Void and Arc Damage. And now he'll get a Solar Damage uh, subclass. Mm-hmm. So I'll be able to do all three types of damage. And I'll be able to uh, wield a freaking Thor Hammer. I saw that. Uh, that, yeah. was, that looked pretty cool, I have yeah. to say. Yeah, so, and then Warlocks are getting, um, essentially, the Elper, Emperor Palpatine. <laughs> yeah, arc I saw that, too. He's like, yeah. yeah. And they get to move around, so they go into third person, they get Arc Lightning, and they get to move around the map like a speed demon. It's insane. And then, uh, also, um, the Hunter is getting uh, the Night Stalker subclass, which gives them a uh, void bow and arrow that they form out of air and uh, can essentially tether enemies to the ground to do damage over time and keep them isolated. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's super cool that the Hunter's a support class. Also, they're introducing several new um, game modes to it, um, one of which uh, is called the Rift and uh, is essentially capture the flag but with style. Um, <laughs> and then... Uh, um, the other one, I think it's called Mayhem or something of the sort, where you, um, this is what I was talking about earlier, where you wish you could use your superpowers more often. Um, all the supers and all the grenades and melees and reloads and everything are on very short cooldown. So essentially it's like um, uh, 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 Earth. Earth mode yep. in here. <laughs> Uh, but that might give you what you want in like that little bit of sort of like spell casting ability, and you're firing your weapons a little less. And then of course there's a there's a new raid which looks from the small footage they've shown looks really cool. New strikes, Xbox players will have uh, all the content that they've been missing out on with the PlayStation 4 exclusivity. Of course they might be missing out on some new things with the Taken King expansion. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. a little. But just always one step behind. Mm-hmm. So I'm super excited about that, but of course that's on Xbox as well. The other one that I was super excited to see was The Last Guardian is finally real. 
apparently. <laughs> yeah, just w- don't wait on bated breath. You might uh, pass out. Where are you at on this one? One through five uh, after seeing the footage or the you know the game. You know, I'm at a three. It looks super choppy right now. If if the Shadow of the Colossus people are behind it and doing more of their magic and shamanistic, you know, emotion sucking gameplay, um, then I will absolutely adore this game. But uh, right now the game looks to be we we basically know nothing about the game except that it is it exists, and there's a little bit more of this companion uh shadow of the classes grabbing and traversal and puzzle kind of situation and until the game comes out i'm still kind of like you know what are you gonna bring to the table here yeah i god man i was really kind of let down in a way i guess by watching this trailer it's like yeah i mean i i t- I kind of checked out, honestly. The voice from that kid was really obnoxious to me. And I just... I don't know. The animations of him were kind of goofy. And you know the feathers on that the cat bird thing? They looked just odd to me. They did. And aesthetically... Very stylized. I mean, yeah. Aesthetically, it looks nearly identical to Shadow of the Colossus. Right. And it has that same kind of weirdly loose animation. Right. But Except for the kid. The kid looked like a little bit of like cartoonish flow kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And everything else looked kind of hyper realistic. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know, honestly. This is a game I would pick up when I it, was, it just happened to go on sale. For like right. maybe thirty bucks. So this is bucks. one of the things about PlayStation is they showed a lot of really exciting stuff that isn't coming out for a while, mm-hmm. you know. And so that's kind of a bummer. They also showed that Horizon game, which oh, 2016, yeah. yeah, yeah, Horizon. That game looks great. Another female prota- protagonist, kind of a cool sort of. Uh, after humanity has come and gone, there's still the, a few humans out there that are competing against robots that have assumed natural forms like ostriches, dinosaur kind of thing. So it's almost... I I like that. I really liked that particular part about it, how instead of just being like machine, like Matrix Sentinels, right. it was, they were like, like organic. Assumed in yeah, assumed prior forms. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, you were fighting them as organic beings as well. It kind of had this Monster Hunter-esque uh, um, Dark Souls kind of thing to it where yeah. you were tr- taking down this big monster uh, by slowly kind of uh, attacking its, it. weak points, its weak points, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I that one looked good. I, the, I mean, obviously the CGI kind of cinematic behind it was really awesome looking but yeah even with the gameplay it looked pretty fantastic so it really did i was super impressed i, I that's another one that i mean depending on when it comes out in two th- 2016 it might be one of those games where like i'm reluctant to play until it goes on sale you know if i right. can get it at a discount so and it also might be one of those games that's like um a last of us experience you know where it's like this is such a singular experience that you'd be a fool to pass it up, you know? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so, we'll see how it goes. So, Final Fantasy VII is getting a remake. Are you interested? Honestly, no. I uh, I played Final Fantasy X, and that was the first Final Fantasy game I'd ever played. I, was, I loved it. I loved every part of it. It was probably a 70-hour game, but... I'm like, I, there's no looking back for me. You know, yeah. that genre is just too time consuming. Yeah, too the repetitive. JRPG. Yeah, yeah, it's tough. It that be that might be one of those games where I did this for Warcraft Three. I went on YouTube. I looked up, you, you know, story. watch the story. Yeah, none of the combat, none of the repetitive yeah. anything, just the story. I might be with you on that one. Yeah, the game looks damn pretty though from that trailer. I mean. If Square Enix is up to their same uh, voodoo magic with visuals, I mean, that game is going to (laughs) be looking really nice. Yeah, definitely. Lastly, to wrap up PlayStation, we have Uncharted 4. You know, like I said, when when, when you look at that compared to Tomb Raider... I think Tomb Raider wins out, and I obviously... I I don't buy a hair for me. Really? 
Yeah, I mean, that game looked pretty good. You know, like, I love Nathan Drake's character. I love yeah. Soli's character and their yeah. their chemistry. But yeah. outside of that, I it's just tough, you know, yeah. because Tomb Raider is visually is so just incredible and that more of that down-to-the-roots like, exploration. And Let me ask this. If Tomb Raider released and uh, you were shooting guns in it, and if Uncharted released and as a curveball... They had you. They, there were no guns that you possessed in the game. Mm-hmm. Would you be into that? Would it be like the same genre, like kind of platforming, make it free running platforming, right. kind of making your way around? Would it? Yeah, be that? it would. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, honestly, yeah, because the the shooting in Uncharted felt really repetitive. I platinumed that game too. And I went through that one on hard mode, and that was nothing but a chore, man. It was just yeah. tough because it's kind of got that clown car effect where enemies just keep pouring out, keep pouring out, right. and you have to dispatch of them. And headshots don't kill them in one shot, which I think that always should be the case, but it just yeah. got into that sort of annoying shooter where it just feels like a chore more so than anything, and you're ducking behind cover, cowering while you wait for your screen to turn not red, you know? like Let's hope that they hear some of the complaints with uh, previous Uncharted and tone down the shooting a little bit mm-hmm. and bring back more of that sort of adventuring because Tomb Raider's stealing the show. Oh, I would, I would absolutely agree with that, yeah. I want to talk briefly about Nintendo and our just thoughts on that since we both own a 3DS and a Wii U. I want to talk briefly on that for maybe five minutes and then I want to talk about maybe just standouts from EA, Ubisoft, Square Enix if we were to just pick a game sure. that we really enjoyed. And uh, so let's talk about Nintendo first. Nintendo didn't show up this year. Yeah, you know, I watched their uh, intro... I was just watching it before we started this, actually, the their digital uh, press conference. And right. I really liked their little skit that they had. Oh, going. the Muppet. Yeah, the Muppet yeah. show goofy thing. I, I mean, I love that. That's super entertaining. Yeah, I like that It a tells lot. us nothing about games, though. Right, yeah. But I, I appreciate that they went through the work, and then they were sitting there, and they, they got to their, their uh, you know, their desk so to speak and all the broadcasters the newscasters were there and then they started turning into i like that i really like i like that that, but i also didn't like reggie fia me coming out and saying our theme this year is transformation it's like nintendo you're you're transforming out of necessity (laughs) yeah exactly it's not a theme at all yeah you're gonna make a new mobile device that's basically probably a cell phone Mm -hmm. and you're working with people to now make your games on cell phone because you've quickly stopped making games that are relevant yeah it's more of a it's a ploy of like desperation you know it's not like strategic in any way it's not thoughtful they're not being you know they're it's kind of just like a backpedaling in a way again yeah i don't know i just i I just think Nintendo's on its way out in a lot of ways. Yeah. Unless I Which think, makes me sad. I think they're going to end up consolidating with one of the bigger players like Sony or Microsoft. I think they'll become a new Sega. I yeah, think, exactly eventually. right. Or yeah. they were... A lot, some people were speculating, actually, in a couple of reviews, if Nintendo's now setting themselves up to be more like a Disney kind of thing, where they're including themselves in theme parks now... They're having all this presence on like mobile devices and further entertainment, like we've heard about, perhaps a Legend of Zelda um, uh, TV show. Hmm. Um, I've heard of a Netflix one. Is that yeah. the one you're referring to? Yeah, okay. and right now it's been really hush hush. But the idea that they're gonna essentially kind of move away from video games and kind of take their cultural relevance and move it towards a broader spectrum rather than just keep making, you know tired video games right that would be an interesting business model that i'm sure they could see some success in surely like make potentially either integrate themselves into an existing uh, amusement park like disney or six flags like find themselves like a flagship to kind of piggyback off of or potentially make their own i think nintendo's got enough like they just they're so despite being like it's now a 
what, 40, 30, 30 or 40 year old franchise now. Yeah. I mean, it's, I think they could easily establish themselves as just kind of a mainstay of culture, like you were talking about. Like, yeah. So I think it, I think it'll be interesting to see what they do next. But pretty poor showing. They're going to wait until 2016 with a lot of like bit really heavy hitters. Uh, a few bullet points that I have here for you listeners, if you didn't watch it. Um, Nintendo's Amiibo, which is vastly underused right now, is going to be implemented into Skylanders which is pretty interesting, with a couple figurines. We have Super Mario Maker coming out September 11th, which is a uh, build-it-yourself Mario machine, kind of in the realm of Super Mario 3, and, like, the top-loaded, or the top-favorited, I guess, um, levels will come to the top of the list, and you can play anyone's level that they've made, so... What I saw is that you could play anyone's level in any one of the games. Did you that would see be that? interesting. Oh well, yeah, I did see like uh, at least uh, um, it was... Super Mario World Two and Super Mario World Three or Land. Yeah, 3. it was like they were yeah. scrolling through the games in their aesthetic aesthetically. Uh, um, that's interesting. So, yeah, I have I a coworker know. that's super jazzed about it. He has like a super creative mind. He loves the Nintendo brand, and he's like, he's like all in. He's like, that's the only game I'm gonna buy next year. I'm like, holy moly. Yeah, I mm, doesn't catch me too much, but yeah. yeah. You want a new Star Fox Miles? I I've seen the trailer twice now. I really liked it on the 64. In fact, the one on the 64 was probably one of the most nostalgic moments of my life in in gaming. This one's not grabbing me. It's just the franchise of, is dead to me. Yep, that's how I feel honestly. I uh, it's a cute do a barrel roll trope now. Yeah, this would be a game that I'd pick up for like 20 bucks maybe, but Nintendo first party games never go on sale, so that's not going to happen. Pick it up for less. Yeah. Uh, there's a new Zelda game coming out, uh, and it's not the Zelda you were hoping for. It's a three player co op game or single player game on the DS. Of course, the DS is their best selling console right now at cross country. It's mm-hmm. very successful. Yeah. So they're going to put most of their games on there including a new Metroid Prime game, even though we all wanted it for... We we wanted another Metroid Prime. Uh, It's coming out on 3DS, uh, and it looks like garbage. I don't know if you've seen anything from this. I haven't seen that one now. It looks like uh, the Metroid Prime game from... uh, Or the Metroid... What was it? It was like the Metroid the Bounty M from no no it was Met- no 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 that looked great uh, but the Metroid um, Hunters I think it was called or is like Metroid Hunters or Bounty Hunters for the DS hmm. like this this looks like DS graphics oh it looks my. yucky uh, so anyways I hope they clean up that and give it a little polish um, so there's Nintendo for you uh, we're going on to EA now Miles nope. I, you got nothing from me, honestly. Really, like, I, I across know, the man. board. Because what I... about? Okay, so we're so I'll go through the things real quick that they announced. New Mirror's Edge looks pretty cool. Mass Effect teaser, okay, whatever. Need for Speed looks pretty. It's another car game. We have an expansion for uh, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic that I don't know if I'll ever get back into that game, but it sure feels cool role playing as a Jedi. Um, Unravel, really cute game. Um, uh, Unravel looked that one. I was like, "Oh, it's so cute uh, with a little uh, thing in a string." I know. But and the and the announcer was just like so nervous and just straightforward. <laughs> he was just like, "Oh, <laughs> it was good." But I, yeah, sorry, yeah, sorry to interrupt. No, Go that's ahead. all right. A whole bunch of sports games that, whatever. <laughs> that's how they make most of their money. So they got to show them. Yeah. And then we also have Battlefront, and you're you can't tell me after what you saw that you're not excited about that. Did you see in the show notes? Did you, are you looking in the show notes? No, I'm looking at my notes. Okay, what? <laughs> what do you got? What games have you? This is the what games have you lost interest in? Why? The show? Why all of the EA games in caps? Why battle? Why Battlefront? I I don't know, man. Like, oh yeah. By the way, you corrected me on the last episode i think it was saying it was a third person shooter it's a first person shooter like i said it was first person shooter and then it was also third person you need to watch the trailer again because there, there there was plenty of third person con- combat you can switch around between the two 
weird because what yeah. I saw was like all first person on Hoth. What it looked okay, like. Okay, you need to go back and watch that whole trailer because you're naysaying Star Wars Battlefront, and that game looked incredible. The graphics on that game, the feel of that game, the clean, the cleanliness of the UI, the idea that, that you was can... really good. I did appreciate that very much. Right. I have to say. Right. The idea that you can get into ATSTs, ATATs, you have a jetpack, this whole like the you need to go back and watch the full the full bit of it. And I'll I'll put a link in the show notes and I'll link it to Miles this very evening <laughs> so we can correct him on his none of the EA games after I... this because that one maybe was one of the most exciting games I've seen at E3. Like I just, I don't know, man. Like, Star Wars games as a whole have never quite captured what it's like for me to watch a Star watch Wars movie. Movies. Well, so these games, now, and I can say this with certainty because I've played the others, and and I'm sure you have too, but you definitely, you feel like you're, so the, the goal behind this is that you're, you are participating in the iconic Star Wars battles, Right? Mm -hmm. So that's the idea. So the Battle of Hoth, the Battle of Endor, battles on Tatooine, chase scenes, that 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 whole thing should ring true to you. Of course they're showing Hoth and Endor because those are the most iconic, but the idea that you're in, you're a grunt or even a overpowered Jedi or Sith or whatever or bounty hunter, that you're playing a part in these iconic battles. That's the exciting thing, that you feel like the battle that you kind of lived it lived in as a kid and you know imagined yourself in and you know played with your action figures that you are living it right i i see i get that but i don't know like even lord of the rings games for me i've never been like oh my god this lord of the rings game is amazing like shadow of mortar was like the closest game that i found i was like oh like this is really cool but it's for me Lord of the Rings and Star Wars, for example, like these two just broadly you got the sci fi and then the fantasy sort of end of the ends of the spectrum, but either of those they just they're better reserved for me as a film and an experience sure. that I am not a part of okay and I, we've talked about this before in terms of the reason why I play female characters is because. There's no, like, debating whether, like, oh, this is a projection of me in the game. It's like, no, that's a woman. I'm not a woman. That's just, like, a complete disconnect for me. So, for me, it's just, it's easier but for you're me. also saying that there's no role-playing for you, essentially. Like, yeah, no, that, that's what I'm... There's a complete I'm... separation. Like, you're not living it. Right. Except that you feel, you feel content, like, making choices and introducing yourself into the gameplay. Like, you're not acting as another character like you're not you're you're never like i'm so into this game that i feel like i am that person yeah instead of like projecting myself it's like i am controlling a character that is an avatar an avatar exactly right so for me to like emulate that star wars it's just it's not as interesting to me if that makes that's sense that's where you feel the disconnect yeah, it's because you're an avatar of a of a nameless face in a battle. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So, I don't but why know. have you liked Battlefield Four then? Battlefield Four? Yeah, like why have you liked the Battlefield games? I don't. Or like, Titanfall. I like the gameplay. You know, like it just right. feels like it's not. It's it's something more. Like I don't know. It, I I don't know. I guess it doesn't seem like I'm explaining this very well. I mean, I get it. You just want good gameplay that rewards you. Like that's what you kind of get off on, right? Yeah, but I don't okay. want. I don't want to like solely. But you don't want to mix like your Star Wars and your like themed licenses with that gameplay yeah i guess okay. if that makes sense like yeah i guess it kind of yeah yeah sure i don't know but i mean i'm sure i'll end up getting it but it's just one of those things where it's hard for me to get excited about oh. i mean i played I mean, like even if it wasn't star wars if i saw those graphics the graphics <laughs> that are in that trailer in like 1080p 
Yeah, and are 60 frames bonkers. per second. It's just lovely, you know? It's, like everything it's... that's going around, TIE fighters screaming in the sky. Mm-hmm. You can look off and you can see the rebel frigates in the, you know, in the atmosphere. And, you know, as the X-Wings and snow speeders drive by, they're leaving shadows of the, on the ground. You turn around and you see Darth Vader there choking out a dude. Like, <laughs> I just, I, like, I love that idea of just sort of, you know, obviously there's that whole idea of being, you know, okay, the Battle of Hoth is done. Let's go play it again, you know? Like, there's that disconnect, but also just kind of, I'm sure the gameplay will be good enough where I will just, you know, like, forgive it of that, you know, that little disbelief I might have. I Yeah, you know, and it's, I don't know, I feel like such, it's weird that, like, I haven't really found anyone that, like, resonates with me on that particular point where... yeah. I just want to be like something that's not established in my mind. Sure. I don't want to, I don't want to like poison the well, I guess. Okay. But, um, no, I, I do see, you know, it, the way that those TIE fighters and the X-Wings who were controlling, it was unbelievable. I was like, it's so tight. Like, yeah, it looked incredible. I, I, I'm not going to argue those points at all. I was amazed at how just like seamless everything was happening on so the, the game. Just needs to be a good combat simulator, and l- like it needs to be a combat simulator first and foremost, and Star Wars secondary. Is that yeah. what you're saying? Yes, okay. Exactly. All right. Cool. All right. Yeah. Got it. Let's hope it stands up to uh, your insane criteria. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I know I'm insane. I'm sorry. That's all right. So. Uh, I'm going to go over a couple things that people might be into, and we'll end on one game that people might be excited about. Um, Ubisoft is making another South Park game. This time, instead of that whole fantasy trope, it's now they're all superheroes and supervillains, which sounds great. Uh, More of the stick of truth quality that we can expect. Um, Ghost Recon Wildlands, four-player co-op, Ghost Recon, futuristic style combat trying to stop a bunch of drug dealers and uh um, baddies out in uh the wild west sounds pretty cool and kingdom hearts 3 was announced and that is where we'll end our podcast so miles will you buy kingdom hearts 3 no absolutely yeah. not <laughs> i don't know <laughs> depending on when it comes out i don't know, I don't know. At this point, it's going to be a tough one to sell me on. Uh, from what I saw, it's a lot of Japanese stuff that I have a hard time identifying with as far as, like, thematic stuff, dialogue, pacing. Oh, the pacing, like we talked about with Final yeah. Fantasy games. It's just... Right. It's, it's mm. just... It's so fo- it's so foreign, you know? It's just too it, stretched out, you know? Yeah. We need more digestible portions of gaming yeah. and it's in an interactive and immersive experience that can be yeah. delivered in a more condensed format. So right. that's a miss for me because I didn't have a childhood. So the Disney <laughs> attraction for that is just it's under the charts. What are you going to do? Yeah. Well, but regardless of, you know, some of these smaller games or games that went under the radar, there's a lot of big blockbuster stuff out there. It was a huge E3. And the idea, I mean, like it's a lengthy podcast. We're probably going to be going on maybe a two-hour podcast here, guys. Thanks for sticking with us. <laughs> yeah. you, you, you are yeah. oof. You're a champ. You're yeah. a champ. Uh, the, uh, the idea, though, that E3, E3 can present us so many games that we have so much to talk about that we're excited about, and at least games even that are like we think look really cool, but need to pass up that's where we stand yeah no it's a what a weird place we're in i was thinking about this earlier this week it's just like i just feel like such a such a ungrateful snob it's just like we have this amazing display of games and here i am just like nope and it's just like someone's oh, like but the one thing that we need to think about too regarding all this and we'll probably just wrap up here but uh the one thing that we need to think about is the the uh the games industry makes so much money and is so lucrative if you do things right that so many people are willing to take the risk on putting a good game out there and so many people are doing that right yeah you know and so now it comes to that threshold where everybody wants a piece of the pie everyone wants a piece of our cognitive you know association 
well, and yeah. our money. Yeah, well, that's that, the other yeah, bottom that, line. It's more a little more important to them than any sort of right, emotional right. response the, we the, may the have. The branding, <laughs> right. That's where we stand now, you know, where so many people are making good games because so many people have gotten good at it because it is profitable to do that, that there's going to be a few that fall by the wayside. Yeah, so there's a lot of incentive out there for them to make the games. There's a lot of incentive for us to consume these great games that have just progressively gotten more immersive and just are constantly evolving in terms of gameplay, in terms of the the graphic appeal of everything that we see and that meaty, visceral sound that we all crave. So, <laughs> I think that's, that should be the name of the podcast. Meaty, visceral uh, sound? <laughs> level, daily Grind. Level 4, meaty and visceral. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, let's do it. All right. Well, we'd like to thank you guys so much for sticking with us through this long post-E3 episode. This is a long one. Thanks for sticking with us. Next week we'll return to you know, the usual sort of digesting of our weekly stuff i wanted to touch upon we talked about a little bit about you know the financial draw of these games and what they get out of us i have a segment that i'd like to share on my investment into the blizzard franchise you are going to be very ashamed of me i'm sure sean (laughs) i i'm sure i will so well everyone uh you can look forward to that on our next episode but this week thank you for joining us on the daily grind you can follow us on Twitter at the daily or at daily grindcast at daily grindcast. You can follow uh, Miles on Twitter at flock of miles. That's correct. And you can follow me, Sean, at the Shanzi, capital T, capital S, T H E S H A U N S I E. And if we were to go back and spell things, Miles is spelt with a Y. That's correct. Thanks for catching that. You got it. So thank you, everyone, for joining us on The Daily Grind, and we'll catch you next time. For now, we say ding. You've made it through level four. Ding! Ding!